Okay, we already spent a lot of time talking about the specific factors model. Here, um, I, I'm not sure if you already realized that um, we haven't yet talked about the international treat. Okay? Remember, we talked about the specific factor model to be able to understand the uh, distributional effect of international treat, right? But if you recall what we have already discussed, you know, we use the, um, the, the specific factor model. We said that, you know, we have one mobile factor, which is labor, and two specific factors, right, capital and land. And then uh, we use graph both, you know, the uh, four quadrant uh, PPF graphs, and also uh, some mathematical ways to figure out the optimal allocation of uh, labor between the two sectors, cloth and food, right? Um, so we already, you know, went through a lot, but again, we haven't yet discussed trade, okay? It's a little weird, I know, but here, uh, finally, it comes to the moment, okay? We're going to add international trade to our discussion, okay? All right, now um, here we will um, rely upon the relative demand, relative supply graph, okay? I know it sounds familiar because back in chapter three, when we talk about the comparative advantage, we already, dis we already used the RSRD uh, model or graph, right? Here you would find that um, what we're gonna use is a slightly different version Okay, um, but just like before, you know, the the first thing we we're, we're gonna make sure is the shape of the R D curve and R S curves, right? So regularly, again, uh, demand curve slopes downward, supply curve slopes upward. So we wanna, you know, uh, making sh make sure that uh, here R D R S. Um, it takes the same shapes or different ones, okay? Now, um, here, let's, you know, put these two curves on the graph, and then we're going to see if they make sense, okay? In other words, we, we, we just, you know, simply put this in front of you and trying to make sense of it, okay? Of course, if it doesn't make economic sense, then we have to say that, you know, that these curves may take a different shape, okay? Now, first of all, um, I want to drive your attention to the axis here. The vertical axis is the relative price of cloth, so it's uh, PC over PF, okay? Uh, which is the same as, you know, the one we used in the previous chapter. But the difference comes from the horizontal axis here. It's a relative quantity of cloth, so QC, which is a quantity of cloth, divided by QF, quantity of food. Now the difference is, in the previous chapter here, we have two economies, home and foreign. So here uh, on the horizontal axis, you see QC plus QC star divided by QF plus QF star, right? But here you won't see QC star, QF star, simply because we only have one economy, um, on this graph, okay? We only have domestic economy here, okay? So, um, you know, once we understand this, uh, we're gonna add international trade to the graph, okay? All right, now, first of all, let's see if a relative demand curve uh, slopes downward just like the regular demand curve, okay? What you could do is you can arbitrarily pick two points along this blue RD curve. Okay, and let's say if we're moving down from this point, let's call it A, to this point B. Okay, so we're moving down along the RD curve. Now, along this move movement, we find that um, the relative price of cloth actually falls, okay? So PC over PF is going down. That means 
、uh, cloth becomes relatively cheaper、uh, compared to food, right? Because the ratio gets smaller. So PC is relatively smaller, okay,、um, uh, to PF. Now, when cloth becomes relatively cheaper,、um, consumers would like to consume more cloth and less food. Okay, so on the horizontal axis, we say this relative quantity of cloth should go up. Okay, in other words, we're we're supposed to move towards the right along the axis. So that's exactly what you know this. Downward sloping RD curve shows. Okay, in other words, yes, RD curve just like the regular sub,、uh, demand curve slopes downward. Okay. Now,、um, similarly, we can do the same thing for the RS relatively supply. Okay, relative supply curve. We pick two points here arbitrarily、uh, along the curve、uh, from here up to here. Okay, so when we move up along the RS curve, we find that the relative price of cloth goes up. Okay, in other words,、um, cloth becomes more expensive, okay, or、uh, pricier than food. Now, because of that, here we're talking about producers. Remember, they would find that you know the、uh, cloth manufacturers would find、uh, producing cloth. Is more profitable, okay? Because for a given、uh, production cost, a higher price of cloth means more profitable, right? So, you know, the cloth sector tend to tends to expand. They're gonna produce more cloth, okay? Or、uh, you could say new firms or factories will join、um, to the production of cloth, okay? And they're going to cut back their production of food because it becomes less uh, uh, profitable. Okay. Now, with a greater C and a smaller F, I'm sorry, a greater QC and smaller QF, the ratio becomes larger, right? So, the relative quantity of cloth becomes greater. So here we're moving towards the right when the relative price of cloth rises. Again, that's exactly what the upward sloping RS curve shows. Okay, so this is、um, once again、um, just like the regular supply curve, upward sloping. All right. Now, once we understand these,、uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about international trade. Okay.、Um, before we show you the graphical presentation. Uh, we would like to make uh, assumptions. Um, the first assumption is we're going to assume that no difference in preference across countries. Here, preference means the consumer's preference. Okay. Basically, this means on the graph, we're going to assume that you know、um, the relative demand curve across countries. Uh, is exactly the same. Okay, that's what you see here. The blue curve here, R D world. Okay, remember in the previous uh, uh, graph, the R D means the domestic relative demand. Here, we replace R D with R D world. That means it's the world or global relative demand. Okay. According to this assumption, this is also、um, The R D domestic, they're exactly the same. In other words,、uh, if you know, on the domestic market, a typical consumer would prefer a comp a combination、um, of let's say、um, two pieces of cloth and ten pieces, ten units of food. Then on the global market or in a foreign country, a typical consumer. Would have the same preference or the same combination, okay? Under certain relative price, of course, okay. And、um, the second thing we're gonna clarify here is、uh, what determines the relative position of relative supply curve, okay?、Uh, especially RS, which is for the domestic、uh, market or economy, and RS world, so that's for the rest of the world, 
Okay, we're gonna say these two are different. Okay, these two are different. Now, this is because of you know um, the domestic economy uh, has probably different technologies, resources, or simply put, you know, uh, different comparative advantages. Okay. Um, when we compare it with uh, the rest of the world, okay, so that's why it's different. Okay, um, you see the second um, RS curve here. We put on the graph. Now you probably wonder why we put RS world on the uh, above the RS. Okay, um, this is just arbitrary. Okay, it's just one possible scenario we're showing you. Of course, if you want, you can put RS world. Uh, below uh, the domestic RS, that's totally fine. Okay. However, I here I would encourage you to think about the economic intuition behind this. Okay. In other words, when you put RS word above RS, the domestic RS, what does that mean economically? Okay. Or when you put RS word below RS, again, what does that mean? All right, so here, um, again, you can pause the video in, in trying to think about this. All right. Now, um, let's go ahead and ex explain this. Because uh, in this case, we put in this graph, we put the RS world above the domestic RS. You'll find that, you know, the relative supply curve of the world um, intersect uh, with the RS. RD world at point two here, okay. But for domestic relative supply, uh, the intersection would be point one labeled here, okay. Now, when we look at the vertical axis, we realize that on this graph, um, the on the global market uh, at the equilibrium, the relative uh, price of cloth is going to be higher than that. On domestic market, okay. Of course, here uh, we are trying to say that when the domestic economy is isolated uh, or separated from the rest of the world, okay. So, um, in other words, you know, they they, they um, cannot trade with each other, okay. So that's why you know we find on global market uh, the relative price is going to be higher, okay, than uh, of Cloth relative price of cloth is going to be higher than that um, on the domestic market. Okay. Now here uh, we're gonna look at the trade. Okay, and how international trade is gonna change this, and how it's gonna affect the income distribution. Okay. Now uh, once again here, I would uh, encourage you to pause the video. And think about you know what's going on here uh, when uh, the domestic economy start trading with the rest of the world. Okay. Now here, um, let's take the cloth uh, sector as an example. Okay, uh, because on global market you know the cloth is more expensive, right? And uh, so you would find that the cloth manufacturers uh, in the domestic economy uh, would have the strong incentive to send their products overseas to make more money, right? Because if it's sold on the global market, they can receive more revenue from the market, right? Now, once the um, the domestic producers send their products overseas, then there will be less cloth available to domestic consumers, right? So the cons the cloth price would tend to go up. Okay. Now, for the food, we find that uh, on the global market is actually cheaper, right? Because a larger ratio means a smaller uh, price of food. So the domestic um, um, market tend to import the food from the rest of the world, which will push down the food price. Okay, so the the consumers would consume more of food. 
right? So on the next video, we're going to continue talking about these.